Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. After World War II, it took years for Japan to rebuild its military. However, the island country has since become a major ally of the West. and restyled its Japan self-defense forces into an extremely modern and formidable military. Of course, the primary role of the JSDF is the defense of Japan and its territories. Given Japan's pacifist constitution, JSDF activities are primarily defensive in nature. Focusing on maritime security, airspace defense, and supporting the country's various allies. However, that doesn't mean the JSDF is completely without teeth. Japan is at the forefront of a wide range of technologies and has incorporated many of them into its military strategies. One of the organizations most responsible for keeping Japan's military technology cutting edge is the Ground Systems Research Center, or GSRC. This group is a part of the Acquisition, Technology and Logistics Agency, which focuses on the research and development of various defense equipment. The GSRC conducts extensive research on firearms, ammunition, ballistic and blast resistant structures, vehicles, vehicular equipment, engineering equipment, and personal equipment. It also has divisions focused on chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear defense technology. In recent years, the GSRC has been engaged in a wide variety of high-profile projects, including research on electromagnetic pulse ammunition, multi-purpose ammunition, air-cooled systems for in-hub motors, environmental recognition technologies for unmanned ground vehicles, electromagnetic railguns, and even exoskeleton suits for soldiers. One of the many advanced technologies currently being tested by the ATLA is advanced laser defense systems. These are particularly effective at countering drones and incoming projectile weapons, and are already in use among multiple militaries. Two Japanese companies, Mitsubishi Heavy Industries and Kawasaki Heavy Industries, have been instrumental in pushing the laser defense capabilities forward. For instance, Mitsubishi has been working on a vehicle-mounted 10-kilowatt laser system. So far, the system has been tested in outdoor field experiments. successfully shooting down a drone at a distance of 1.2 kilometers. Meanwhile, Kawasaki has been developing a more powerful 100 kilowatt laser system. Due to its increased capacity, this particular unit requires a larger power supply and cooling systems, so it's intended to be mounted on larger, trailer-type vehicles. It operates using a 1 micrometer band fiber laser and is equipped with an infrared camera to detect, track, and lock on to drone targets in a fraction of a second. Such laser defense systems represent a significant shift in military technology, offering cost-effective alternatives to traditional missile defense. Indeed, 
Lasers allow for continuous operation as long as electricity is supplied. Contrasting sharply with the high costs associated with interceptor missiles. Japan has also seen significant developments in the use of railgun technology. Railguns are a unique type of weapon that uses electromagnetic forces to launch projectiles at extremely high speeds. Unlike traditional firearms that use chemical propellants like gunpowder, railguns use a pair of parallel conductive rails and a power source to create a magnetic field and an electric current. Together, these accelerate the projectile to several times the speed of sound. This high velocity allows the projectile to travel great distances and maintain a flat trajectory over those distances, ensuring far greater accuracy than other types of long-range guns. Perhaps most importantly, projectiles fired from rail guns carry an enormous amount of kinetic energy, which can be very effective in penetrating armor and other defenses. Countries like Japan, the UK, and the United States see rail guns as immensely useful for long range bombardment, anti missile defense, or as anti satellite weapons. There's also interest in using railgun technology for civilian purposes, such as launching payloads into space. Indeed, the high velocity achievable by railguns could make them a cost-effective method for putting satellites into orbit. As it is well known for having one of the largest and most well-funded militaries in the world, the United States has been a huge proponent of railgun development. Again, because these weapons are often capable of launching projectiles at speeds up to Mach 6 or more, they offer significantly increased range and reduced time to target compared to conventional artillery. The United States sees such capabilities as playing an integral role in both attack and defense. In recent years, the U.S. military has partnered with several firms to produce various railgun prototypes. One such example was created by BAE Systems, a British multinational defense, security, and aerospace company. BAE's railgun has already demonstrated record-breaking performance in tests, achieving unprecedented projectile velocities and showcasing its potential effectiveness. While this device is still in the development and testing phase, the United States feels it may have the potential to revolutionize naval warfare. allowing ships in the U.S. Navy fleet to do immense damage to enemy vessels at incredible distances, while protecting against incoming missiles, torpedoes, and planes. Some of the most impressive railgun tests were performed back in 2017 at the Office of Naval Research. During this test, the large-scale electromagnetic railgun was hooked up to a series of batteries and tasked with firing projectiles over distances of 100 nautical miles. Tests like these are extremely important because railguns require extremely precise engineering to ensure that the electromagnetic forces are applied uniformly. Any variation can significantly affect the projectile's trajectory, and therefore, the weapon's accuracy. Of course, like traditional firearms, 
Rail guns are subject to external factors like wind, air density, and gravity. However, the high velocity of railgun projectiles can reduce the impact of these factors over shorter ranges and minimize them over long ranges. The unique needs of railguns are a big reason why they have yet to be deployed aboard a naval vessel. For instance, railguns require an immense amount of power to operate effectively. In practical terms, a large-scale railgun, such as those being developed for naval applications, can easily require power in the tens of megawatts. For this reason, the weapons often use capacitor banks to store the electrical energy required for a launch. However, the power supply must be capable of charging these capacitors within a reasonable time frame in order to support repeated or continuous fire. Since many ships already have immense power needs, rail guns could lead to more problems than they solve. Of all of the advanced warships in the U.S. Navy fleet, only one type of ship has the potential to power an onboard railgun the Zumwalt-class destroyer. This unique-looking guided destroyer was introduced in 2016. The Navy originally planned to build 32 of the vessels, but canceled the program due to cost overruns. Now, only three are in active service. The Zumwalt was designed as a multi-mission stealth ship. This is part of the reason for its bizarre, angular shape, which helps reduce its radar cross-section. The Zumwalt class is also equipped with numerous other advanced systems, including an integrated power system, which can distribute electricity from its gas turbine engines to propulsion, weapons, and sensor systems. This allows for greater flexibility and efficiency in power management and is the primary reason why the vessel might someday carry the first seaborne railgun. In fact, the ships already offer a wide range of advanced weapons. Zumwalt-class vessels are equipped with an advanced gun system and two 30mm cannons, as well as a range of smaller weapons. However, its primary offensive capabilities come from the MK-57 vertical launching system. The MK-57 is an advanced network of missile cells integrated into the peripheral structure of the ship. As opposed to having them clustered in a few central locations. Though it seems almost trivial, this design drastically enhances the ship's survivability by distributing the missile load. The MK-57 VLS also has more missile cells than older VLS systems, allowing the Zumwalt to carry a wider variety of projectiles and better adapt to changing combat needs. Until rail guns can be properly incorporated onto ships, vessels will have to rely on more traditional weapon systems for attack and defense. Fortunately, such technology is still improving rapidly. A good example of this is the C-RAM, or rolling airframe missile. It was designed to provide ships with a last line of protection against incoming anti-ship missiles, aircraft, and other threats. In that way, its primary purpose is to intercept close-range threats that have penetrated other fleet defenses. Because it reacts automatically, it can detect, track, and engage incoming threats much faster than the average human reaction time. This means more lives and more ships can be saved. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.